Hello students, welcome back to the biochemistry revision lessons. We are now discussing justification or explain why type of questions. You know those are the compulsory questions, the answers of which should be absolutely to the point. Now this is the second video where I will be discussing these justifications. Alright, now timestamps are given. If you already know some answers and if you like to revise some answers, you can exactly go to the time mentioned and you can find the answers. Now this is not the first, uh, you saw the thumbnail this is the second video right so in the last episode we discussed these videos right so if you want to know the answers you can go back and watch that video and then come back here so let's discuss about the today's justification topics the first question is dna but not rna is a better evolutionary genetic material now this simply the answer is dna is more stable than rna all right so that can also be the alternate justification question that is dna is more stable than rna right if this is given better genetic evolutionary material you first need to start your answer dna has been chosen as a better genetic evolutionary material because it is more stable than rna then you need to discuss what are the reasons why dna is more stable than rna so the number one reason will be it has got a 2 prime deoxy group. Deoxy group means normally there is a hydroxyl group in RNA. In DNA that oxygen is gone. So deoxy. We have simple H hydrogen bond, right? The absence of that O oxygen become, uh, makes the 2 prime group less electronegative, right? So what happens is a tendency of a nucleophilic attack to happen from neighboring hydrogen atoms. And in this case, in case of DNA, it is immune to that 2 prime nucleophilic attack. So that should be the number one reason. DNA having a deoxy group does not have the risk of being nucleophilically attacked. Hence, it is more stable chemically. Number two, there are plenty of RNAs in the environment which actually leads to rapid degradation of RNA compared to DNA. DNAs are also there, but RNAs is present everywhere. It's present in the in hairs, in your fingertips, in surfaces, everywhere. So RNA is much more degradable. And the next and last reason is RNA is much more thermolabile compared to DNA. You know, in reality, DNA can be stored in minus 20 for almost a year, more than that. But in order to store RNA, you need minus 80 degree centigrade, right? I agree in reality minus 20 and minus 80 are way below normal but still if you want to store the genetic material in lab also DNA is much more stable. So number one no nucleophilic attack in case of DNA, number two plenty of RNAs and number three much more thermo stable. DNA is much more thermo stable compared to RNA. So that is why DNA has been chosen as a genetic material. The next one, isoenzyme assays are helpful in diagnosis of myocardial infarction. Now, it's tricky. See, myocardial infarction means both acute myocardial infarction as well as old myocardial infarction. Yes, we are always bothered in treating AMI, acute myocardial infarction, because if undiagnosed patient most likely will die, right? However, there may be few cases where a patient may be misdiagnosed or the diagnosis may be missed if there is silent or low-grade MI right in that case isoenzyme also helps right so isoenzyme helps in detection of both acute as well as old myocardial infarction so what are these number one isoenzyme you need to mention is ckmb creatinine kinase mb you already know there are three isoenzymes bb uh, increase in brain infarct and mm uh, increase in skeletal muscle injury crush syndrome duchenne muscular dystrophy all those things however the cardiac version the cardiac isoenzyme mb creatine kinase almost always is diagnostic of acute myocardial infarction right that is an isoenzyme another isoenzyme that is lactate dehydrogenase the one okay the first lactate dehydrogenase ldh has got five isoenzymes but ldh1 rises in myocardial infarction but it rises very late all right so uh, elevated level of ldh1 although not used nowadays still has got some diagnostic role in detecting an old myocardial infarction. So all in all, you need to mention CKMB, you need to mention LDH1 and your question will be answered. So isoenzyme assays thus play a helpful role in diagnosis of myocardial infarction. The next one, lipoprotein lipase deficiency may lead to hypertriglyceridemia, right? It can be phrased in an alternate way. Uh, the question might be, 
uh, lipoprotein lipase deficiency leads to milky serum right that is known as lactescence right milky serum the serum will appear absolutely milky white so what's the answer lipoprotein lipase actually has dual function right number one it serves as triglyceride hydrolase and number two it facilitates uptake of lipoproteins so deficiency will lead to accumulation of triglycerides right and the prevention of the receptor mediated uptake also leads to accumulation of chylomicron so this lipoprotein lipase deficiency is type 1 hypercholesterolemia familiar hypercholesterolemia that leads to number one hyper triglyceridemia and number two hyper chylomicronemia right serum becomes absolutely milky white answer is very simple lipoprotein lipase has triglyceride hydrolase function if it is deficient then there will be no hydrolysis of triglyceride and there will be hyper triglyceridemia in serum next one dna with higher gc content have got relatively higher tm or melting temperature this is very easier to understand you see both the strands of dna has got either at bond or GC bond. Now the AT bond has got two hydrogen bonds and the GC bonds have got three hydrogen bonds. So in reality whenever DNA has got more GC content I mean here is a G and here is a C if these are plenty if those are plenty there will be much more triple bonds in the DNA structure right and we need more energy to break apart this uh, triple bond this triple bond this tri three hydrogen bonds in order to separate the DNA. And you know the melting temperature is the temperature at which half of the DNA strand has been denatured, right? So, since we need more energy to disrupt the double strand, the energy is actually in the form of heat. And this heat will lead to a higher melting temperature. So, the answer is very simple. Higher GC content, DNA with higher GC content has got much more stable bond between the two strands because GC bond is a triple hydrogen bond. Hence, we need more energy in the form of heat. And this leads to a relatively higher melting temperature. And lastly, methotrexate is used as anti-cancer drug. Well, this is an enzymology answer. The drug methotrexate competitively inhibits. Very important, the keyword is competitive inhibitor. It competitively inhibits the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. Dihydrofolate reductase is used in formation of tetrahydrofolate. And tetrahydrofolate is an important con constituent of DNA and RNA, right? Tetrahydrofolate will be used in order to produce the backbone, genetic material, DNA material, right? So, in cancer cells, we need to stop the reproduction, the, the multiplication of cells, right? Remember, in normal individual, in adult, the cells doesn't grow that fast, right? So, Anti-cancer drugs almost always acts those cells that are rapidly growing, rapid genetic material, rapid DNA development, rapid DNA replication, right? We need more genetic material and that's where methotrexate will simply deprive the growing cells of DNA, right? It will deprive of the raw material, it will competitively inhibit tetrahydrofolate, the enzyme that acts in the formation of tetrahydrofolate that is dihydrofolate reductase. Remember, methotrexate competitive inhibitor of dihydrofolate reductase prevents the formation of tetrahydrofolate, prevents formation of genetic material, prevents DNA replication, prevents cell growth and ultimately the cell will die. But this may have a side effect on rapidly growing cells in adult individual, you know, hair follicles. You almost always have heard in any patient that receives this kind of chemotherapy, hair fall occurs, the patient may become fully bald. Yes, it is temporary, hair follicles again come. But that may also be given as an explanatory type of question. Methotrexate in chemotherapy leads to excess hair fall. The answer is very simple. You need to first tell that methotrexate being an anti-cancer drug, you need to describe the mechanism of action and then to say it targets rapidly glowing cells that is hair follicle and that leads to hair fall. So that's it. Those were the five simple explanation of these explanatory type of questions. Let me know if you like this video and I will definitely upload more videos addressing much more important topics well these are also important much more important topics from other chapters are also coming so stay tuned till then bye and take care and thanks for watching and 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 if you are with me if you are watching this video till now you need to type the keyword the code word in the comment section that is genetic if you type the word genetic in the comment section i will know that you have watched this video till now so thanks for watching